Did, should we just do a sign or? No. What's up, y'all? Check it out. This is episode one of season two. And the biggest question you might ask is, what the fuck took so long? COVID's fucked up. We all went through our own shit. It is what it is. Welcome to the show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Tile Freak Podcast. The name of the episode today is called Let Me Explain. So I guess you're going to explain to us why you haven't had a fucking podcast in a year? <laughs> no, not at all. Actually, I'll, I'll explain a little bit. We actually decided to build a new office for the podcast, and we're in the middle of construction. As you can see around me, there's studs, there's sonopan paneling. We're in the middle of it. And I wanted really to wait until this was all perfect, right? Like we want it perfect before the, the big reveal of the episode season two, here we go. But you know what's funny is almost once a week, my boy Mike, the producer of the show would call me and he's like, hey Clint, we ready? We're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. And I kept saying, oh no, not ready. It's not okay, we gotta get this done. Oh, we're gonna do this. But in the end, he called me a week ago and he's like, Clint, are you ready? And I was like, yes. Yes, fuck man, I'm so fucking sick of not getting this shit off my chest. I am fucking sick of it. Nothing's perfect. Nothing's fucking perfect. There isn't a perfect time to have a baby. There isn't a perfect time to get a loan for a house. There isn't a perfect time to do the fucking podcast. So yes, Mike, yes, I am ready. So let's drop this shit. The first episode is called Let Me Explain. Let me explain. Possibly the English language's thesaurus, dictionary, Webster's, whatever the fuck it is, is the worst sentence on the planet. Ask me how I know. I know because it's one that I have used thousands of times. A little bit of background on me. I'm a fucking mutt. But there's two parts of my background that matter to me probably more than anything. I got a little bit of Colombian in me and I got a little bit of Portuguese. So I talk a lot and I got a lot of passion. What does that get you? Bumping your gums all the fucking time. Talking, talking, talking. Clients ask you a question, one simple question. You go on for 20 fucking minutes with an explanation. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Well, I'm here to tell you from the other side of that, it's not a great thing. And it sure doesn't wind you in a place where you learn a lot from other people. It leaves them thinking, wow, that guy just fucking verbally diarrheaed all over my face. And I'm using the most dramatic words that I can to try to get this effect across to you. Now, there's a person, when this little light bulb dinged in my head, there's a person out there that I'm not a huge fan of. In fact, there's probably a lot of envy because he grew up around 45 minutes away from my house. I never met him, never talked to him. But he went on to be undoubtedly the most successful football player in history. You heard me, he retired, right? Tom Brady. Why am I not a fan? Well, first of all, I'm fucking envious. I became a tile guy and that motherfucker went on to again become the most successful football player in NFL history, period. I don't give a shit what anybody says and I don't like him. I'm not saying that because I'm fanboying over here. I'm saying it because it's the truth. It's the fact. And if you're a Raider fan like me, nothing pains you more than to admit that. It's probably a little easier, though, because he just retired. So now that we've got that off the, the table here, what did Tom Brady say so magical to make this light bulb go off in my head? Tom Brady was in an interview a couple years ago, and he got to New England. He was talking about the story, and a comment that he said really struck with me. And I was probably looking at this interview, looking for something negative to say about Tom Brady. But what I got was a tremendous amount of value. He said, if you're explaining, you're losing. I'm like, fuck you talking about Tom Brady. You highly successful fucking football player isn't explaining and you're fucking winning. Me losing all the fucking time and always explaining shit. You must be wrong, right? You must be wrong. It's not me. It's not my fault. It's everybody else's fault, right? No, 
it's not. It's your fault. It's your fault. The sooner you recognize that, it's your fault. Seriously. I know it sucks. It doesn't feel good. But at the end of the day, the light bulb went off and I said, God damn, this guy is right. If you're explaining, you're losing. And I thought about it and thought about it. And it took me months and years pondering this statement that this guy, I have no interest in liking, listening to, following anything, said. And then it made me think, well, shit. If I was explaining something to somebody while Tom Brady was talking, I wouldn't have heard that shit. You know, one mouth, two ears, that whole thing. And if you haven't heard that before, you have two ears and one mouth so you can listen twice as much as you talk. So what does that get you listening? What does that get you listening twice as much as you talk? You learn shit. Just like I learned from Tom Brady, somebody who I did not like. So I'll give you a little lesson here. You can go home and you can practice a really good, easy way to get good at listening is by sitting down with somebody who you don't hear much from, who doesn't talk a lot. You sit down with them and you ask them a question. Simple question, easy question, doesn't matter what it is. But you spend the next 30 minutes of that conversation shutting the fuck up. Don't talk. Don't input. Don't add your synthesis. Don't nod your head. Don't say yes, yes, yes. Don't do anything. You will find after trying this for the first time that it is incredibly difficult, especially if you're like me. It's incredibly difficult. However, it's very powerful for the individual that you're talking to. It creates a lot of value for them as a person because you're listening to them. And I promise you'll learn something, something new. Every conversation, either it's about them or about you, and all of that is valuable as fuck. Why do people want to talk about themselves? Why do people want to do these things? Buddies of mine, a couple of buddies of mine have complained to me over the years, and I've experienced this myself. Your wife walks up to you. She's got a blue dress and a red dress, and she's like, which one looks better? And you're like, oh, the red one. She puts it on the bed. She puts on the blue one, and you guys go out. Well, what the fuck? Why would you even ask me if you weren't going to go with what I said? Right? She asked you because she wanted you to corroborate what she already thought, what she already knew in her mind. You see, it's about her, and it's her dress. It should be about her. It's not about you. It's not about what you think or what you feel. It's about her. So if you would have stopped and said, I don't know, honey, which one do you like best? She might have told you. She might have said, and I'm not saying don't be a fucking liar. If you don't like it, you don't have to say you like it. That's not where we're going with this. But just take a few minutes to learn. Take it in. Absorb what she has to say. And do the same with your clients. When you go out in your jobs, when you go out in the grocery store, practice. Talk to people. Engage with them. But ask them more questions than you tell them shit. So remember, let me hear more about you is a way better sentence than let me explain. On that note, as you can see behind me, I have a lot to do, so I'm going to get the fuck back to work. I guess we should do it again probably, right?